Hey, this is Ciderhelm, and welcome to the Vainglory Hero Spotlight. Today we're going to take a look at Arden, a technologist veteran who will protect his children at any cost. Like moving pieces on a chessboard, Arden's power comes from his ability to reshape the battlefield, allowing his allies to seek better positioning while discouraging enemies from doing the same. One of the first things you'll notice about Arden is that he doesn't use energy. Instead, he unlocks a unique resource called Vengeance when he first learns his Blood for Blood ability. Anytime Arden's Vengeance is full, he can consume it with his Blood for Blood ability to strike at a nearby enemy. Once consumed, Vengeance will slowly build back up. Landing basic attacks and using Arden's abilities in tactically effective ways will also grant Vengeance. Arden's heroic perk, Julia's Gift, allows him to recover some health every time he takes damage. This heal is equal to a small percentage of his missing health, meaning he'll recover more when he's closer to death. However, this healing has limits. Arden can never recover as much health as the damage he took from a given attack. Arden can use Vanguard to dash to the defense of an ally, granting them a barrier and a brief burst of movement speed. During this time, Arden gains vengeance any time this ally is attacked. Take note, the strength of Arden's barrier is based on how much bonus health he has from items. One more thing, the moment the barrier is created, there's also a shockwave that deals crystal damage and slows nearby enemies. Arden can cast Vanguard on himself, dealing the same damage and slow to nearby enemies. However, the barrier strength, movement speed, and vengeance gains are much weaker when he applies them to himself. Vanguard's Overdrive grants a burst of bonus vengeance when Arden uses the ability on someone other than himself. I recommend learning Vanguard at level 2, unless you're likely going to need it for an early fight. After this, upgrade Vanguard first and take its overdrive if you're playing Arden as a protector. Arden's Blood for Blood consumes his vengeance to deliver a devastating punch to a nearby enemy. This is treated as both a basic attack and an ability, allowing it to deal both weapon damage and crystal damage. Like basic attacks, the weapon damage from Blood for Blood can critically strike and apply weapon effects. Blood for Blood's Overdrive grants a significant increase to the final weapon and crystal damage dealt by the ability. In most cases, I recommend learning Blood for Blood at level 1. I recommend upgrading Blood for Blood first if you're playing Arden as a warrior. Arden's ultimate allows him to literally throw down the gauntlet. After slamming down on a nearby location, he gains full vengeance and projects a large perimeter that can trap enemies on either side. When the perimeter first forms, it will knock enemies away from the edges. After this, the walls will remain for several seconds. Enemies who cross the perimeter through any means will be stunned and take crystal damage. After being stunned, enemies have a small grace period where they can move freely between either side. However, enemies can be stunned more than once if they cross the perimeter again. Each successful stun grants Arden bonus vengeance. If Arden leaves or is forced out of his own gauntlet, the perimeter is instantly destroyed. I recommend learning and upgrading Gauntlet whenever it's available. Each rank dramatically increases the duration of the ultimate while also reducing its cooldown, so only take both overdrives if you're sure that you prefer your damage output over the increased utility of the Gauntlet. When it comes to Arden's item choices, there are a couple important things to be aware of. First, since Arden does not use energy for his abilities, items with energy and energy regeneration instead grant him a small crystal power bonus on his abilities. This isn't enough to make energy-based items stronger than their alternatives, but you should still feel comfortable picking them up if you want the utility. Second, Arden's Blood for Blood is tied to his Vengeance Meter and does not directly benefit from cooldown acceleration items. However, cooldown acceleration is still fantastic, especially in a Protector role, as it allows you to have your Vanguard available more reliably. Alright, let's talk about items that complement Arden's Protector role. I recommend starting your build with an Iron Guard, then picking up an Oak Heart as soon as you can. Crucible, Fountain of Renewal, and Shiver Steel are all very solid items for Arden, so you'll want to upgrade Oak Heart along one of these paths. As soon as you're comfortable with your defense, immediately begin building towards Tier 2 Travel Boots. These will allow better tactical plays and let you reach your allies more quickly from other areas on the map. At this point, I strongly recommend picking up at least one or two items from the offensive trees. As mentioned earlier, if your focus is defending allies and maneuvering around the map, cooldown acceleration items are fantastic. On the other hand, if you want to increase your team's damage output, Bonesaw has strong synergy with Arden's abilities. Arden is very flexible with his item builds and can even steer away from the protector role if he has a team to back him up. 
When playing with friends, I encourage you to discover what item builds fit best with your team's favorite heroes and playstyles. Let's take a look at some Arden gameplay. The enemy team has just begun attacking our gold mine, and I'm heading there as quickly as I can. Catherine interrupts my ultimate with a stun just as I'm landing. Though Gauntlet can be interrupted, it has a greatly reduced cooldown when this happens. After throwing out some punches, I start backing off to bring the fight closer to our pedal. But Glaive has pushed me right back into the enemy team. By using Vanguard on myself, I'm able to damage and slow the entire enemy team and refresh my blood for blood cooldown quickly. But this was too aggressive. With Crucible, I'll just barely manage to make it back to my team. Seeing an opportunity, I turn around to help finish off the enemy Glaive. When playing Arden, it's almost always a good idea to use Blood for Blood any time it won't get you killed. Also, being willing to stick around and attempt plays at low health is risky, but Arden's mobility and healing makes him well suited to this. Giving my ultimate another shot, we're able to swarm over the Catherine hiding in the brush. As my Vanguard comes off cooldown, I'm about to make a mistake by using it on myself. If I were to use Vanguard on Jewel, the Overdrive will give me enough vengeance to quickly land another Blood for Blood on the enemy pedal. Jewel barely makes it out alive, but the two pedals engage each other, resulting in two dead pedals and a victory in this team fight. Thanks for watching the Arden Hero Spotlight. Download Vainglory free on the Apple App Store and join us in the Halcyon Fold.